Hello everyone, am I audible and visible? Let me know then we'll start. Am I audible and visible? Hello everyone, am I audible? Okay, fine. Hello everyone, am I audible? Good. So, hello everyone, welcome to An Academy Future Doctors. I'm myself Dr. Deepthi Karya, I'm MD PhD Physiology and I'm your faculty for Physiology. Okay. Uh, now, let me explain in brief as well as I will, ex uh, I will, uh, uh, share some of our announcements with you. We'll provide you NEET PG notes. These are the comprehensive notes for the next. Next, that is NEET PG 2023. That is next. For that, we will provide you notes for more than 12 months of subscription. Okay. Uh, uh, another important announcement here is if you take one year subscription, you will get six months extension free on the subscription. You can use my code dipt 10 and you will get 10% extra discount on each and every subscription. Okay, fine. Uh, now, features of our subscription plus subscription. Here, you can choose the best from the best. You can access both live and recorded classes. You can uh, study on the device of your choice. You can learn from India's top educators for your medical exams. Uh, you can compete in the live test as well as quizzes. You can access question bank, uh, which is having more than 25,000 questions. Mm. Next is your iconic subscription here. Your access to the best from two of the best. And which are these two? One is on Academy Prep Ladder with on Academy. All the features I have explained. And second, that is on Academy and Prep Ladder with Prep Ladder. Here you can have clinical and integrated essentials, video lectures from the Dream Team, Question Bank 3 with active guidance, system tags, and more. Uh, rapid revision and snapshots and treasures and 2021 Dream Notes. Uh, these are our NEED PG September 2021 toppers and Focus FMG 2021 toppers. Uh, on Academy Store was opened here. We also have added certain features in our special class. We made the special class live and interactive. You have facility for poll for the learner. You have a facility of raise a hand. You can never miss a class as you are always notified for the class. You can get lecture notes, PDF notes. You can download and you can access the class at anywhere and at any time. Now, another announcements are there. One is uh, we have a uh, uh, two months batch that is uh, NEET PG 2022 previous year question batch, uh, batch. That is for two months from March 2nd to May 2nd. Okay. Then uh, focus FMG 2022 batch that is comprehensive batch for two months also that is here. Uh, for Focus FMG, we have nine months batch that is that has been started from 2nd March to 2nd November. Uh, for next, if you are planning to appear NEET PG in 2023, this is the batch for you. Uh, this batch started from 2nd March. This is for one year. Uh, NEET PG 2022 All Educator Revision Batch also that is for two months, 2nd March to 2nd May. Okay. Uh, this batches were for 15 days. Another two batches started for one for nine months and second for four months. That is for Focus FMG. These are our subscriptions plus subscription as well as iconic subscription. You can subscribe from your mobile. You can choose plus or iconic subscription. Another important uh, thing here is if uh, the duration of subscription is longer, rates are cheaper. Okay, and you can use my tone. Sorry, my code Dipti10, that is to get 10% extra discount on each and every subscription. Fine. Now, huh. another announcement here is uh, you can directly join our quiz. For today, I have created quiz of membrane physiology. And this is a code for quiz. How to attend quiz, that is take a quiz option, then you just have to enter this code. This is the code for today's quiz, not this one. You have to enter this code, 775454. If you enter this code, 775454, then uh, you can easily enter in a quiz. And 
there are 10 questions uh, and you will be uh, given 20 seconds for each okay fine okay so now today's topic let us start today's topic that is heart failure one of the important topic physiologically as well as in medicine and mcq purpose for need pg also this is the important question now so what is how can you define heart failure heart failure the definition is easy it is any pathophysiological state pathophysiological state okay in which heart fails to perform its function and what is the function of heart that is to provide cardiac output so cardiac output is reduced okay so heart fails to generate or heart fails to pump cardiac output which is required to meet requirements of our body tissue requirements of our metabolizing body tissue that is heart failure okay so pathophysiological state of heart in which heart cannot pump sufficient amount of blood to meet the requirement of metabolizing tissues okay now here uh, in which situations there is heart failure or cardiac failure so that this is pathophysiology there are mainly three situations number one when preload increases what is preload preload means amount of the blood coming to the heart through veins you can see here through veins whatever amount of as we all know venous return is equal to cardiac output okay so how much blood comes to heart heart will pump the same so if in some condition when venous return or another terminology that is end diastolic volume at the end of diastole volume of the blood in the heart when this volume increases then normally as we have discussed according to Frank Starling's law what is Frank Starling's law Frank Starling's law states that more is the initial length of the muscle fiber more will be the force of contraction so within physiological limit within physiological limit if our end diastolic volume or venous return increases then heart will pump and increase the cardiac output but when it is more than physiological limits then what happens heart fails to pump the blood okay normally for example suppose if we are performing exercise so what happens because of contraction of the muscle and uh, other mechanisms sympathetic activity venous return increases but this is physiological so physiological mechanisms that increases venous return within physiological limits and that can increase cardiac output if heart is normal but if suppose heart is failed what happens this heart cannot be able to pump the blood so one is increased preload second increase after load after load means peripheral resistance you can see here this is the aorta okay in which heart has to pump suppose somebody has hypertension so what happens this resistance is increased so now heart has to pump more to overcome this resistance so in this condition also heart uh, goes into failure or you can say that initially there is cardiomegaly initially heart has to work more but later on because of continuous increased resistance and if heart is not performing its function properly that results in heart failure so this is another cause for heart failure third third is pathology is there inside the heart heart itself is not working properly either because of myocardial infarction or because of valvular disease or any other pathology is there inside the heart and therefore heart cannot pump so this is also third cause for the heart failure okay am i clear so three causes increase preload second is increase afterload and third that is uh, decrease in the myocardial contractility now uh, next we discuss about types and causes of heart failure which are the different causes of heart failure there are different classifications six types of classifications are there number one that is depending on the onset onset means if the heart failure is sudden or chronic sudden heart failure that is also known as acute heart failure sudden failure of heart to perform its function okay and most common cause for sudden heart failure is myocardial infarction okay myocardial infarction in that we have sudden heart failure in the patient second chronic heart failure means gradually if suppose some patient is having valvular disease and valve 
cannot suppose there is stenosis of aortic valve so here heart has to pump more against the uh, stenosed valve so what happens gradually heart fails so this is first classification one is acute heart failure and second that is chronic heart failure acute heart failure the cause is myocardial infarction and chronic heart failure the cause is uh, your valvular heart disease so first class so now we are discussing the classification first classification is depending on the I repeat depending on the onset that is acute and chronic now second classification that is depending on the side of the heart failure that is either left side or right side okay suppose you can see any pathology is there on the left side then that results in left sided failure if it is pathologies in right side we will discuss which are the pathologies that results in left and right, right heart failure okay so left side heart failure you can see here this is your left side of heart you can see left atrium this is left ventricle in between they have, there is mitral valve this one hmm? this is aorta this one okay and there is aortic valve okay so left heart failure what happens heart left side of the ventricle is not pumping properly so what happens a cardiac output decreases so what happens large amount of blood is there in the left ventricle okay now the blood is not pumped so you can say large amount of blood is accumulated in left atrium also and then goes back into the pulmonary veins because this left atrium there is opening of pulmonary veins here Okay, pulmonary veins they carry oxygenated blood from uh, lungs okay fine so here there is backflow of blood okay and that causes congestion in the pulmonary circulation okay now which are the conditions in which we have left side of heart failure one that is systemic hypertension suppose aortic pressure is increased because of the hypertension second aortic valve gets stenosed stenosis of this aortic valve hmm? third aorta is constricted here you can see aortic constriction this one okay so aorta is constricted coarctation of aorta okay or maybe because of mitral stenosis here mitral valve is stenosed so these are all the causes of left sided heart failure okay fine now uh here uh next is there is uh, so this is these are the uh, just a minute huh. so conditions as we were discussing first that is defect in the outflow second that is left ventricular uh, this inflow obstruction ventricle is not getting blood third cause that is myocardium itself right ventricular uh, sorry uh, left ventricular contractility is decreased like in case of infarction myocardial infarction or cardiomyopathy okay so in in this condition also there is heart failure left side of heart failure now what are the effects of left side of heart failure you can see here this is the left heart when left heart fails to pump what happens you can see here uh, this are pulmonaries so pulmonary congestion okay so there is backward transmission of this pressure so left ventricular failure that results in increase in the pulmonary venous pressure so you can see pulmonary veins are distended and therefore fluid is transudated you can see here suppose pulmonary veins are distended so you can see pulmonary capillaries are there from veins capillaries they arise and uh, along with that we have alveoli nearby so the fluid is coming out of this capillary into the alveoli air spaces and that results in edema pulmonary edema okay now because of this pulmonary edema which are the clinical features clinical features are we'll discuss just sorry just let me give me some time so here okay so what are the clinical features the person is having dyspnea dyspnea means difficulty in breathing dyspnea difficulty in breathing that is one of the important symptom because of this uh, there is congestion pulmonary capillary and alveoli 
between them there is a fluid collection okay second is paroxysmal nocturnal dysuria, uh, dyspnea means at night the person is having dyspnea so that is second clinical feature third clinical feature is orthopnea orthopnea means in lying down position the person is having dyspnea but when the person sits you can see here at night person can breathe and sputum is frothy because diaphragm gets irritated so these are the clinical features of left side of heart failure okay now Next is, uh, so these are the left, these are the clinical features of right, uh, left side of heart failure. You can see here, dyspnea, elevated pulmonary capillary pressure. Because of pulmonary congestion, other symptoms are also there. The person is having cough, crackles, wheezing are there. Blood stain, sputum is also present, okay. Orthopnea, okay. These are the important clinical features of left side of heart failure. Now, next is right side heart failure. So here what happens, you can see this is your right atrium, right ventricle. Now this right side of heart is not pumping properly. So what happens? Right ventricle is not pumping blood. Right ventricle is pumping blood through pulmonary artery into the lungs. Okay. This is normal. So what happens here now? There is no pumping of blood from right ventricle into the pulmonary artery. Okay. So what happens here? There is decrease in the right ventricular output. So now the blood is going backward. So jugular veins, because right atrial pressure is depicted by jugular venous pressure. So jugular venous pressure increases, rise in JVP. Another clinical, very important clinical feature is the person is having edema. Edema that is because of increased fluid collection in the interstitial spaces. Okay. Sometimes the person is also having ascites. Peripheral edema, mainly, mainly this edema is found in the dependent parts, okay. Also, the person is having hip. Hello, hello, Shilpi, good evening, beta. Hmm. Welcome to my class. Hmm. So, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly is also there. Hepatomegaly, congestion, because of congestion, that is hepatomegaly. Neck veins are distended, that is because of raised JVP, okay. Congestion in various visceras also. So, these are all the effect of right-sided heart failure, okay. Now, uh, right ventricular failure, as we have discussed, what is uh, the cause here? Right ventricular failure, that causes backflow of the blood in the veins. Hmm? And that raises your JVP and all these effects are because of the backflow now what are the symptoms we have discussed left side failure has the symptoms are common symptoms are dyspnea okay orthopnea these are the symptoms here what happens there is edema very important symptom in the right side heart failure why edema because the fluid venous fluid increases and as pressure hydrostatic pressure of the fluid in the blood vessel increases you can see suppose hydrostatic pressure of the fluid increases what happens fluid is moving out of the blood vessel into the interstitial spaces so this fluid is collected in the interstitial spaces and that produces dependent edema dependent edema means mainly edema is found in the feet and sacral region dependent parts has got edema this is very important clinical feature of right side heart failure Next important feature here, JVP raised, distended jugular vein. So this may be asked as a neat question, which are the, these are the clinical features of right side heart failure, left side heart failure, okay. Then another important thing, because portal vein, portal vein has increased resistance. So the person is having hepatomegaly and splenomegaly. You can see here, this is the important clinical feature, okay. So these are three important other clinical features are also there fatigue is there peripheral vascular pressure increases okay and other features are core pulmonary is also there okay anorexia gi distress these all are the other features but main these three features edema neck veins are distended and portal blood vessel resistance increases that results in hepatomegaly and splenomegaly so this is second uh, classification we have discussed first classification of heart failure that is acute and chronic depending on onset second classification left side right side heart failure now third one that is depending on cardiac output or you can say inadequate cardiac output that is your forward heart failure or backward heart failure okay backward or for forward heart failure now what is this forward heart failure forward heart failure means 
heart cannot pump blood in the aorta this one this is forward heart failure okay therefore what happens tissues are not getting proper blood all the tissues are not getting proper blood so this is forward heart failure now which are the signs and symptoms because heart cannot pump the blood and tissues are not getting blood the person is having generalized weakness because of lack of blood flow and lack of oxygen okay exercise intolerance means if we ask the person to perform exercise that is the person is having dyspnea early okay systemic blood pressure decreases so brain is not getting blood there is cerebral ischemia and when there is cerebral ischemia there is hypoxia hypoxic symptoms in the cns okay another important clinical feature is uh, increase in the ventricular and diastolic volume why because heart is cannot pump so what happens inside the ventricle large amount of blood is collected so there is cardiomegaly so these are very important clinical features of your forward failure three uh, sorry four features generalized weakness second exercise intolerance third cns ischemia and fourth cardiomegaly okay next is backward failure backward failure means here what happens there is no feeling you can see here this is forward fail failure forward failure means cannot pump the blood and backward failure means there is less amount of feeling heart is not getting proper blood okay so decrease feeling when feeling is decreased definitely output is reduced okay so and another thing when output decreases and diastolic volume increases and there is congestion of blood in the venous system so there is venous pressure is increased and pulmonary pressure is increased pulmonary congestion is there this is like backward failure or right side failure okay then another thing is there is a uh, backward failure is also known as very important thing because congestion of the blood blood is congested in the heart so it is known as congestive cardiac failure congestion is there in the heart this is backward failure so this is third classification first classification depending on onset acute cardiac failure and chronic cardiac failure okay second classification that is on the depending on the side left side or right side third depending on cardiac output that is forward failure and backward failure forward and backward failure fourth classification that is depending on compensatory mechanism compensatory mechanism is whether compensatory changes are there after heart failure or not so here you can see one is compensated heart failure means all the heart failure that is or the same symptoms are compensated okay now here uh, whatever uh, this performance of the heart which is impaired that is compensated by our body mechanisms and which are these mechanisms they are mainly our mechanisms we all know renin angiotensin mechanism baroreceptor mechanism cns ischemic mechanism okay so here there are local changes in the heart either heart itself try to compensate how it tries to compensate by uh, there is enlargement hmm? cardiomegaly suppose suppose somebody is having hypertension for a long period of time so heart has to pump the blood against higher pressure so what happens when heart is pumping blood continuously against higher pressure then heart chamber enlarges so that this is local change second change is there is hypertrophy hypertrophy means increase in the size hypertrophy i think all of you are knowing hypertrophy means increase in the size and hyperplasia means increase in the number of cell okay so there is hypertrophy and hyperplasia but here hypertrophy is there not hyperplasia fine hmm. sorry just just a minute huh now next is there is heart rate also increases because heart tries to pump the blood so there is increase in the heart rate another as i told you this compensatory mechanisms are working which are the compensatory mechanisms as i told you baroreceptors mechanism chemoreceptor mechanism they try to bring the uh, changes back to normal sympathetic system and adh mechanism and renin angiotensin mechanism so this is compensated heart failure okay next is decompensated heart failure means here 
this heart failure changes are not reversed back because of some other precipitating factor means suppose the person is having heart failure okay along with heart failure the person is also having some other factor that aggravates the heart failure like the person is having infection anemia is there if suppose the person is a female is pregnant so pregnancy so all these factors they increase the symptoms of heart failure the person is having hyperthyroidism thyrotoxicosis the person is having myocardial infarction along with heart failure right? so all this all these uh, factors they inhibit the compensatory changes so this is your decompensated so two uh, types of heart failure compensated and decompensated heart failure okay so this is your fourth classification depending on compensatory mechanisms okay then comes fifth classification that is systolic and diastolic heart failure now what is systolic and diastolic you can see here this is normal heart this is systolic dysfunction diastolic dysfunction what is this systolic dysfunction the name itself suggests for systole is not proper means during systole what happens heart contracts and heart pumps the blood so this function is not proper so this is known as systolic dysfunction so here what happens ejection fraction decreases instead of normal normal ejection fraction is 55 to 65 percent instead of that it becomes 20 percent only so you can see that heart cannot pump so that is that results in decrease in the ejection fraction next is diastolic heart failure diastolic heart failure what happens here in diastole what is the function of heart in diastole heart relaxes and it receives blood so here there is defect in the relaxation and poor ventricular feeling during diastole okay so what are the causes here here it is because of myocardial infarction or any other causes in which heart is not been filled properly so this is diastolic heart failure so this is your fifth classification so let us revise last is sixth one so first classification we have discussed number one that is depending on the onset of heart failure that is acute and chronic okay second classification of heart failure that is depending on the side left side and right side heart failure third classification of heart failure depending on cardiac output inadequate cardiac output that is forward heart failure and backward heart failure okay fourth classification that is compensated heart failure or decompensated heart failure okay and fifth classification that is systolic and diastolic heart failure and sixth one last one that is high output failure and low output failure this is one of the very important cause of heart failure high output failure and low output failure here what is it high output failure i'll explain so many times this is asked high output failure is present in which clinical condition commonest condition in which we have high output failure what happens here uh, output cardiac output is high but heart is failed okay uh, here uh, because uh, cardiac output why it is high because of the pathological condition but this high output is not sufficient so this is high output failure okay for example in case of fever when metabolism increases that is high output failure thyrotoxicosis when uh, t3 t4 level increases there is high output failure anemia because hyperdynamic circulation Hmm? hyperdynamic circulation that is high output failure and beriberi that is deficiency of vitamin b1 that is also high output failure okay then low low high uh, sorry low output heart failure here cardiac output is low and heart is failed here what are the causes because of ischemia ischemic heart disease heart is not pumping properly hypertension also produces low output failure and valvular uh, and pericardial diseases if there is disease in the valve because of that also there is low output failure failure okay so this is your low output failure cardiac output is reduced okay here hmm? so this is about low output failure now what are the clinical features some of the important clinical features of different types of 
heart failure that may be asked as a short questions or MCQ. Okay. If there is left side of heart failure, which are the clinical features, the person is having cardiomegaly, enlargement of heart, cardiac arrhythmia. And because left side of heart is failed, we have discussed there is pulmonary congestion. And when pulmonary congestion is there, that results in exudation of fluid from pulmonary capillaries. You can see here, these are the pulmonary capillaries and these are your alveoli. So, from this, the fluid will be there in the interstitial spaces. So, that produces dyspnea, difficulty in breathing. Because gas exchange is not possible because of this fluid collection. Okay. And orthopnea, we have discussed. What is orthopnea? That is dyspnea in lying down position. That is orthopnea. Okay. So, these are the very important clinical feature of left side. Suppose somebody asks you, uh, left side heart failure has this clinical feature. So, at least one or two important one you must know. In left side heart failure, this dyspnea is very important feature. Orthopnea is very important feature. If right side heart failure, what happens? Right side, right atrium and ventricle, when they are not pumping, what happens? Then there is congestion that increases. Very important feature is JVP, jugular venous pressure increases. And congestion in the uh, other organs, abdominal organs that produces hepatomegaly and splenomegaly. Okay, the person is having edema in the dependent parts, peripheral edema, the person is having ascites and hydrothorax. Okay, so these are the clinical features of right side heart failure. Okay, then what are the important clinical features of low output failure? When the output is low, so the person is having generalized weakness, fatigue is there, blood pressure decreases, stress tolerance decreases and because less amount of blood is flowing through kidney urine output is also reduced that is oliguria decrease urine output okay so these are the clinical features of low output failure now chronic heart failure what are the clinical features again jvp is increased these are same like right side of heart failure hmm? edema is there in the dependent part and congestive hepatomegaly hmm? now which is the compensatory mechanisms as we have discussed according to frank starling's law Initially, you can see here in this diagram, this is normal, normal right atrial pressure or you can say end diastolic volume and normal cardiac output. This is the curve, okay, here, okay. But initially, suppose your end diastolic volume increases, okay. So, as end diastolic volume increases, you can see here output also increases, but this is up to limit. But if when heart is getting failed, this is the curve is followed, means now heart cannot pump the blood and because heart cannot pump the blood and diastolic volume further increases okay so heart and still because of failure of heart heart cannot pump the blood and cannot be able to maintain cardiac output so this is the compensatory mechanism which is found initially but after continuous uh, this myocardial deterioration of function this mechanism is not working in later stage and that results in failure of the heart function okay so this is compensatory mechanism now second compensatory mechanism is our baroreceptor mechanism what happens because heart fails so what happens in aorta you can see here because heart is cannot pump in blood in the aorta so what happens there is less stretching of aorta so less discharge from baroreceptors okay when baroreceptor discharge decreases your sympathetic system they get activated in the brain and this sympathetic causes, sympathetic activation, it causes vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction, increase heart rate, increase force of contraction. And because of all this, our, heart, our cardiac output increases. So, this is baroreceptor mechanism that tries to increase the blood pressure. But when blood pressure falls below the range of baroreceptor mechanism, what is the normal range for working of baroreceptor? That is 60 to 180 millimeter of mercury. But when the blood pressure falls below this, now your baroreceptors cannot work. Okay. So, this is baroreceptor mechanism. Now, it is not working below 60 mmHg. Third is renal mechanism. Here, because heart is not pumping properly, so kidneys are not getting blood. So, what happens when kidneys are not getting blood? You can see extracellular fluid volume decreases and when pressure and volume both are decreases, pressure coming uh, to the heart, uh, from the heart to the kidney, when it decreases, what happens? Renin secretion increases, okay? So, here uh, we have already discussed. Uh, hello, beta. Huh? Uh, 
uh, what is the what is your question please let me know what is your question zova ha huh. one question yes yes you can ask your question you can ask the question hmm you can type the question i'll answer you okay fine so here renal mechanisms also try to uh, compensate how because as we have discussed when blood pressure decreases when blood volume decreases and when decrease in the blood sodium renin angiotensin mechanism starts working renin is secreted from jg cells which converts angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 this angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 by angiotensin converting enzyme and this angiotensin 2 has three effects number 1 it increases aldosterone level and second by increasing aldosterone it increases sodium water reabsorption from kidney and third it also causes direct vasoconstriction so it increases blood pressure okay so this way renal mechanisms try to increase blood pressure but here very important thing is hmm, between angio difference between angiotensin 1 and 2 yes beta angiotensin 2 is active form angiotensin 1 is less active okay and this angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 by enzyme angiotensin converting enzyme so you can say this 2 uh, sorry angiotensin 1 is a precursor for angiotensin 2 okay angiotensin 2 is the active form am i clear okay fine so ha huh. but very important thing here if suppose blood flow to the kidney decreases very much yes yes that is ace angiotensin converting enzyme yes you are right hmm. ha huh. okay fine now ha huh. but here this renal mechanisms they don't work when when you have renal ischemia means very less blood flow to the kidney as well as best products are accumulated because of this welcome beta welcome zoa mm. mm. okay fine mm. so here uh when when heart is failed in such a way that kidneys are not getting blood flow so this mechanisms are not working and that results in renal failure so this is these are compensatory mechanisms but they are not working in different situations now very important part we are coming that is diagnosis of heart failure how can we diagnose we can diagnose heart failure by two ways number one is clinical features we have discussed the person is having dyspnea in, in left side heart failure edema is there okay the person is having uh, this uh, exercise intolerance so so many features are there one is by clinical feature second by investigations okay investigations are also very important to diagnose by investigation we can diagnose nature of heart failure which type of heart failure severity it is mild moderate severe and if complication has developed or not so first is ecg by ecg we can find out if there is hypertrophy of heart or not in my ecg class you can go and uh hello zova yes beta regular classes are there for first year uh you can go to our channel on academy future doctors we have started regular classes from 1st of january so you uh, all the topics are available you just go to the site and write down the name of the topic we are regularly taking this classes daily we have live class am i clear okay or you can join our telegram group we will share the link okay you subscribe the channel on academy future doctor now onwards you will get all the notifications but if you wish to uh, uh, attend first year classes all the classes are available from 1st january yes yes th this channel is for first year mbbs only beta this channel is definitely for you people hmm? we are taking classes of physiology i uh, i will guide you you just go to on academy future doctors write down my name on academy future doctors dipti and you will get all my classes list and you can see let suppose you wish to uh, 
uh, this uh, uh, read or we wish to watch class uh, about neuromuscular junction i have taken that class neuromuscular junction so you can get the class okay disorders of neuromuscular junction skeletal muscle muscle property cardiac muscle property all the classes are available okay am i clear am i clear or otherwise uh, huh. no i am physiology teacher beta i am physiology teacher dr mona lisa is anatomy teacher she is our anatomy faculty she is also taking regular classes for first year mbbs student you just subscribe this channel on this channel you will find all the first mbbs uh, classes and all the classes are free to access am i clear hmm these videos are already present yes yes this is for first year as well as second year also but if you write down name of our uh, name of your educator you will get first year classes anatomy physiology biochemistry we have all the educators dr i, I myself dr sheetal dr mona lisa huh? so you can write down name of the teacher and you will get the classes or you can write down name of the topic also and you can get the class okay fine hmm. so now so ecg is used for the investigation uh is it included in clinical subject uh, clinical subject here we are uh, teaching you pathophysiology means physiology related with the clinical aspects also so that way also it will be helpful for you okay hmm? clinical subjects also some of the teachers are available but at present if you are in first year it is not needed for you you just concentrate on anatomy physiology biochemistry okay that is sufficient for you okay and try to watch the video biochemistry teacher uh, dr uh, shubhangi shubhangi dr shubhangi is there hmm? okay fine or you search you search in this channel you will find all the videos okay let me continue huh. so there is electrocardiogram we can get we can diagnose arrhythmia we can diagnose myocardial infarction we can also diagnose hypertrophy of heart okay so this all can be diagnosed by electrocardiogram next is radiograph radiography of chest chest x ray which is the clinical feature in the chest x ray heart is enlarged you can find okay there is congestion in the lung that is found uh yes psm uh i think no faculty for psm at present uh but as per my knowledge i can say that psm exam will not be there you you won't be having psm exam in first year so please concentrate on this three subjects anatomy physiology biochemistry okay psm is sufficient what you are learning in your college okay don't give much stress because psm you have to learn throughout your mbbs don't worry about psm at present you will definitely learn psm nicely because if you know medicine and ha huh, ha huh, so don't worry about psm much okay at present because in first year these three subjects are very important to know okay and to pass at least because you have least time as compared to your seniors and other students so start reading from the very beginning okay we have started from 1st january you are two months late but still it is not very late just you can start you can watch all the classes we have tried to cover all the topics okay in anatomy physiology biochemistry hmm? yes no issues that is sufficient that is sufficient don't bother about psm at all just concentrate on anatomy physiology biochemistry that is much required okay fine so radiography of chest there is cardiomegaly congestion of lung and valvular defect also is found then biochemical tests are also required we can have blood urea and electrolyte to find out renal functions serum potassium level to find out hypokalemia 
ठीक है एंड सीरम सोडियम लेवल टू फाइंड आउट हाइपो नेट्रीमिया ठीक है देन ट्रीटमेंट विच आर द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट इन हार्ट फेलियर Why do we require to treat? That is one is to reduce cardiac workload. We must have to reduce cardiac work workload. Second, if any precipitating factor, if the person is having hypertension or valvular heart disease, okay. Ah, ah, if you are ah uh, first year syllabus, if you are regular, we are trying to finish the syllabus by August September, hmm? August September or October, late by late, hmm? but. You have to watch all the videos. That is in your hand, not in our hand, because we are completing our syllabus. You have to complete by yourself. Okay, fine. So, ah, uh, one is one principle for the treatment is we require to decrease the workload on the heart. Also, we are removing precipitating factor if somebody is having heart uh, hypertension, valvular disease. We have to treat the cause also. Suppose. Because of hypertension, heart is failed, so hypertension is treated first. Also, congestion is reduced, and to prevent complication because of heart failure. Now, which are the treatments should be given for the patient of heart failure? Number one is rest, complete bed rest is required because exertion increases exertion increases symptoms. Okay, that is one. Second, meals should be light and small because extra meal also increases workload on the heart. Sedatives are given, okay, and anti-anxiety drugs are given. Cardiac glycosides, digitalis are given that strengthen the heart. Sympatho mimetic drugs are also given, and both of them they increase the myocardial contractility. Salt intake is restricted. Why? Because uh, that is salt. So salt increases water retention. So to reduce this retention, salt intake is also reduced. Another is diuretics are given. Sorry. Last slide. Diuretics are given. This diuretics they increase the urine output and that decrease the fluid retention. And vasodilator drugs like angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor because angiotensin is not uh, converted into angiotensin one is not converted into two if we are giving this drug. So this vaso vasoconstriction is uh, reduced. Okay, and the name of the drugs are captopril and enalapril are given. And this drugs they decrease the afterload. They decrease the uh, load against which heart has to pump. So these are the ways of treatment in cases of heart failure. Okay, am I clear? So this is all about today's class. Now this is clinically also important. Sometimes MCQ is also there from this class, which different types of heart failure, how to, how to diagnose, how to treat. Okay, fine. So. Thank you thanks for watching if you like my video you can like it you can share with all your friends and you can subscribe our channel on academy future doctors thank you so much